Okay, in this video I'm going to quickly show you how to make a histogram with GeoGebra. So I've opened mine with the last previous settings I had show up. I have opened the spreadsheet view and I have entered in 10 data points, just some numbers I made up which could be grades. I wanted to use an example similar to grades, so I've got some scores ranging from F's to A's here. Okay. The quickest way to see a histogram is just to select the data and then when you're in the when you've selected something in the spreadsheet you get these icons and select the first one here for one variable analysis and you can do the different types of plots similar to the box plot and the histograms and dot plots and things I've done before if you select histogram there you go okay. I forgot to mention in the last video with dot plots and box plots you may not see the statistics unless you choose that from the options because it may be unselected so if you want to see the statistics select that if you don't unselect it but there you can get a histogram. This little arrow will toggle some options. Right now I have my classes set manually. We can toggle that off and on. If you don't set them manually, it'll automatically choose for you and it'll give you the slider to change the bin size. If you click on set manually, you can tell it where to start and what the bin widths are. So I started at 40. I could actually, I don't have any scores in the 40, so I could start at 50 and then have the bin width being 10s if I wanted to do the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and so on. Okay, something that's really important on a histogram, I have a score of an 80. I need to decide, does that go in the bin from 70 to 80 or in the bin from 80 to 90? If I select the less than or equal to, it's going to throw, when I look at the bin from 70 to 80, it'll accept the 70 but not the 80. If I switch that, we see that the bin for the 70s gets higher because the 80 gets included. So you can pick whether or not you want to include the left endpoint or the right endpoint in your bin. Okay. There's an option to do a cumulative histogram, which is where instead of just showing the counts in the bin, it shows the counts up to that bin. So from 0 to 50, we have 1. From 0 to 60, we have 2. If I take that off, the height's 1. There's 150, 160. The cumulative keeps count as you go across. Okay. The types of histograms we've been looking in class at in class have not used cumulative. We've just been doing the counts. Okay. There are a couple of options. You can do what's called relative frequencies, where you divide by the bin width, and you can do normalized, which we talk about in Chapter 3 of our book, where you want to have the area under the curve be 1. But I'm going to set it to count. That's really what we're talking about in this video, how to do a histogram where the height of the bar tells you how many are in that bin. This height is 1 because there's 150. This height is 1 because there's 160. This height is 3 because there's 3 in the bin from 70 to 80, including 70 but not 80. A couple of other options. I can turn on a frequency table to actually see those numbers. And you can see here from 70 to 80 I have 3 of them. If I change the selection, it jumps to 4 because the 80 gets thrown into that bin. So you can turn on or off the frequency table. You can turn on or off what's called a frequency polygon, which just connects the top of the bins to give you kind of a graph of what the shape would look like. And if you normalize it, you can do what's called the normal curve, which we talk about in Chapter 3. I'm not going to talk about that right now. Okay. So I'm going to close that. That's a way to get a quick picture of a histogram, but there's really a much better way that gives us a lot more control, which is what I'm going to do now. Okay. So a histogram is a little more complicated than a dot plot or a box plot. We're going to need more stuff. We need to know the boundaries for the bins. I'm going to call those B for boundaries. And so I type B equals to give it a name, and then I'm going to type the set brackets, the curly brackets. And within those brackets, I'm going to do 0, 10, 20. I want my bins to go by 10s from 0 to 100, so I'm going to type in those numbers. Oops, got a little typo there. So I want to go from 0 by 10s out to 100, hit enter. That'll create the list B, which is now my boundaries. I'm going to start typing the word histogram. And you'll see, you can't actually see it here unless I move the window up. There's multiple options. 
I'm going to choose the best one that gives us the most control and the most appropriate for what we're doing is the second one in the list. So I'm going to select that and that tells me what my, my inputs are going to need to be. So the first thing you do with this set of inputs is you have to tell it the list of boundary classes and that's what I've called B. Okay. Now we need the list of the raw data and I've actually forgotten to select that so I'm going to go back over here select that right click and create a list and now I'm gonna go back down here and my list of raw data is going to be list one okay. density if you want it to do relative frequencies or normalize different ones you have to use the density and the density factor I don't want to talk about that right now I just want to do the basic histograms where it plots the heights being the counts in those bins. So to do that I'm actually going to tell it false and then we don't need a density factor for that, the optional command. So to make a histogram given the boundary distances that you want, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, or whatever you want them to be, for grades I'm going to count by tens. You type in histogram, you give it that list, you give it the list of data, and then if you want it to plot the frequencies as the heights, the number of that I have between 50 and 60, I want it to plot that number as the height, tell it false for the last command. Okay. So there we have it, histogram B, list 1, false. I'm going to hit enter, and I actually don't see much. That's because I don't have a very good window right now. I'm going to click the little X to hide the spreadsheet. And I'm going to change my window by right-clicking in the graphics view and selecting graphics and I can change the the axis here <coughs> excuse me on the x-axis I'm going to go I want to see the or the y-axis so I'm gonna go from negative 10 to 110 I have exam scores that run from 50s out into the 90s but I want to see the whole spectrum here so I'm gonna go from negative 10 to 110 the y's depends on my frequencies I do want to see each axis, so I'm going to go from negative 1 up to 10. Since I only have 10 scores, I won't have any counts more than 10. Okay? You can always go back in and change these. Just see what they look like if you're happy with it. If you're not, you can change it. There we go. I actually have the axis turned off right now because I was doing some geometry also. I'm going to right-click, go to where it says axis, click on that, and turn the axis back on. So there's my histogram. You can use the tools to zoom in and out. This tool allows you to move the screen around. So that's it. To make a histogram, let me type it in one more time just to show you. Type histogram. Go down and select the second ob option so that it'll tell you what you want to put in. So you want to do histogram B, the list, so you do your boundaries, the list, which is list 1. We want to do false on using density. We do not want to use density, and so we just delete the last option, delete the comma, hit enter, and that's how I got my histogram. Okay, That by default will select the left endpoints as your boundaries. Remember the little less than or equal to part? If you want to include the left endpoints, that's what this does. If you want to include the right, the command is actually histogram right. Histogram right. If I hit enter. It actually selected the option. I didn't mean to do that, so I got to delete some of this. So there we go. So if I type histogram right, B for the boundaries, list one for where the data is, and false, that should create a second histogram which has the right boundaries selected. So I can't see the difference right now. I'm going to hide one. You can you can click on the little circles to hide and unhide. So there was the one, it called it A, and the number it gives you is the area, if you add up the areas of all the bars, which will be the number of points we have on a regular count histogram. So A is the histogram where we used the left endpoints. B chose the right endpoints, so we see some of these bins got taller. And that's it. That's how you make a histogram.